Hi and welcome back to another video of JPlay. I am Marcus and as you can see today I'm starting my playthrough of War of the Ring the card game. And because you know my channel I definitely decided to add the Against the Shadow expansion to that. So yes I'm doing a full solo game of this game. Quite honestly I only played I think one and a half to two sessions of this game basically as training exercises and only using the solo mode. So I've never played the normal mode, basically a four player game or so. For whatever reason, when it first came out, I wasn't really that much excited when I have seen the first video about this. For me, it really felt like it's a four player game with some variants, how you can then play it with three or maybe two players. But after I got this at Essen, basically both the base game and the expansion, I was really eager giving it a try, the solo mode. And yeah, I really quite liked it. And that's why I'm doing this today. There is one thing though, because I'm really not a master in this game, I definitely decided to go with a short scenario, um, which is basically the Fellowship of the Ring. So it's me, Gandalf, as the Free Peoples against the Balrog of Moria. So we are playing the first book of the trilogy, so which it says here, from the Shires to the Shores of the Anduin. Um, with this special mode, you are removing quite a few of cards. I think we're basically halving the decks as far as I could tell. And we're also staging the battlegrounds. Normally these are kind of randomly. We are removing some of the pairs. We are not using any ring tokens. And ultimately it should be much quicker to record, to play and to edit for me. And then depending on how things go, I really might consider doing a full playthrough of the trilogy game that is. Before I get started, huge shout out to all of my patrons and channel members. You guys are truly amazing. Can't really tell how much I appreciate your support. And as usual, I will explain the game as I go. And I think we are pretty much good to go again. I did all the setup in respect, removing cards, staging the battlegrounds decks and the path decks here respectively i have given each of the players the seven card i'm playing with i think there is a mode which is called i think less challenging mode or so what is called yeah it's a difficulty mode here so it's standard or challenging i'm going with a standard easier mode which yeah basically means we are drawing one fewer card for the bot player that is there's one Last thing left to do, that's removing two cards each. So each of the players will start the game with seven cards in their hands and I have to cycle down to two. Cycling means they're not really out of the game, they're coming into a discard pile, but from that discard pile, those cards could come back. And that's especially true for the AI player because he's really running through his deck like crazy. That's at least how I found it. For the bot player we are simply doing this randomly so I'm removing this card and I'm removing this card and um, they come face down into the cycle pile and I also don't know what the cards are that he currently holds in his hand. We will find those out or this out rather sooner than later. For us on the other hand we really have to make some informed decision so ha let's have a quick look at the cards in our hand and the main or the most important information right now at this point in time um, is this or are these numbers here this tells us on which path we can play um, this particular card so Boromir can either go to a battleground of the Dunedain um, so basically that's on the Dunedain battleground that is or we have Dunedain armies and leaders are allowed so this could come up rather sooner or we can send him to a path three to six we will start with path one then we will do path two and in this scenario um, we will end the game after we have resolved path six that is then the game basically ends at the end of that round and we tally up our score and whoever which side has the most amount of victory points will win and i think in ties it's always the shadow player so um, with that information, we have to cycle down. I'm relatively certain I will cycle Velia Ring of the Air um, because it's an item that belongs to Elrond. Right now, we don't have Elrond in our hand. So I think that's right now maybe the least useful card. So we are simply cycling this. It could come back uh, depending a little bit on how much cards we draw and whatnot. And then we need another card. And right now I'm still tempted to cycle Boromir because yeah he could theoretically give us some fighting power when we are fighting a battleground um, where he is allowed and the first battleground will i think he will be allowed actually the problem is we don't have a dunedain army which would support him so i think 
Mm, borrow me, okay. He also has this ability here. Yeah, we have to forsake a card, but we draw a card. No, I think Boromir has to go to the cycle part. Again, he could come back, so don't mourn too soon. And the rest of these cards will go into our hands. And then we can basically start the game. In this scenario, the Balrog is the starting play. I think in all the other scenarios, the free peoples will go first. That's different here. And the first thing that we are doing is to activate a battleground. We know what this first battleground is because it's staged. Normally this is done randomly. And here we have Amina's Morgul, which we have to play. Let's put it in the middle of the table. And it comes with an activation power here, which is quite a nasty one. So the Mordor player draws up to five cards. One at a time, play the first Nazgul character draw to reserve that's important and then stop cycle the unplayed card it's worth two victory points it's a shadow battleground which means if we are not actively you know, taking this one over it will score for the shadow player two points but we have to come up with basically three swords or at least one more then there will be shields at the end of this round when we are resolving this battleground here and these icons down here tell us which armies and or characters we can send to the battleground. So in this case, you see it's Dunedain. So we could send Strider and Boromir as well to this battleground if we so desire. Let's do the activation here first before we activate the path and we will draw the top five cards. That's a cave draw. We are ignoring this. It's not out of the game. It's cycled. And I think, yeah, this is a Nazgul, the commander. And as the battleground tells us, we have to play it into the reserve. Um, it's a Nazgul and yeah it comes with a power and action if in reserve use an action cycle this card and each shadow player draws one card yeah why not but for now this Nazgul needs to go to the reserve this cave troll is simply being cycled going into the cycle pile and then we have to activate one of the tier one paths here so I will roll a four-sided die one two three four so it's this one here and it's Gildors and Camp. And I think this is a good one, actually. This is simply out of the game. And a path is something the shadow players have to always actively, let's call it attack, in order to gain some victory points. The victory points printed here is only true for us. If we as the free peoples will be able to successfully defend it and it will score us one point. For the shadow players, it could be more than one point because it's always some kind of a difference between the number of skulls they are playing versus our defenses. But I will come to that. Here it says path one. This kind of correlates with the number on these cards here, which means Sam Gamchi. We can move to any path one to nine. In this scenario, only play until path six. The four trilogy is always nine paths. So we, which which means again only characters which can go here on path one are allowed to be played here. That makes sense, right? It also comes with an activation effect which we're triggering right now. The elf player, which are we, because there's only one player here, draws one card and then cycles one card from hand. That's not bad. So let's see what we get. Oh, it's Gandalf the Grey. He is very powerful. And I think instead of we will cycle Strider for that, I guess. Yeah, we have the perfect weapon here. Yeah, Strider goes into the cycle pile and we will take Gandalf the Grey into our hand. Nice. And then we are basically good to start our actions. For the AI player, we have a handy dandy flow chart here, first of all. They would try to use an action, usefully resolve an action. Then he would try to pass, which is doesn't really happen too often. That's at least how I understand. I think there are only very few instances where he, the shadow player is actively passing before we do that. Then uh, they're trying to move something and if everything else fails, they would play a random card from the hand. As we already know, the Balrog has a card in its reserve and it also comes with an action. And this action allows us to cycle this card and each shadow player draws one card. It has to be a useful action, but useful is also relatively straightforwardly um, defined here in the rules. It's always useful to draw cards and that's exactly what we are doing. So we are cycling. The commander, it's not out of the game, could and will come back most likely, but this will add one card to his current hand, which brings him to six cards. And this also means we have now fewer cards than the I player, which would allow us to pass. And that's actually something we may want to consider unless I'm seriously considering taking over Minus Morgul. And we could, in fact, theory do that by playing Gandalf the Grey 
together for example with Glamdring which would give us three attack versus two defenses which would be enough but with six cards in his hand I'm relatively certain yeah I think he will definitely try to defend that and all the other cards we have like Sam Gamchi and Frodo we cannot send them to battlegrounds because they don't have the icons up here only some characters can be sent to battleground um, so it's not very likely that we will be able to win this battleground and that would be quite a considerable price actually because you always lose the attackers no matter if you are successful or not you have to forsake the cards that you have used for the attack so i think because our hand only consists of five cards we are allowed to pass because the number of cards in your hand is less than each opponent we only have one opponent we have five they have six so we are allowed to pass and we can also always pass if our hand size is equal to or less our carryover limit which is usually two but that's not happening but it's an all one of these conditions does suffice so i think in this case let's pass Back to the shadow player, back to the flowchart here, and I will not constantly show this to you. This is only true for the first two, three, four actions or so, just to give you an understanding. So we can't no longer use an action. We still cannot pass. We don't have anything to move, which means we are playing a random card from our hand. And again, I don't know the hand. I will roll a six-sided die. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's the one. That's my J-Play die, by the way. Um, my logo is the one because I'm usually <laughs> rolling usually low. So we are playing the topmost card which is an item which i guess we can't play actually because items always have to go to a wielder this card can only be played to a wielder on a path there aren't any wielders on a path which means it is unplayable eliminate this card so this is not really out of the game and then choose forsake one card to add one corruption or draw two cards and in this case choose means we as the player get to choose and who really need to think about this for a second because Adding one corruption is an instant victory point, basically. So that's not great. Drawing two cards could be also some victory points, actually. And because, on the other hand, no, I think then he will go strong, very strong into the second round. So in this case, it might be really short-sighted. I will go for the forsake one card to add one corruption option here. Forsake or forsaking a card for the bot player is not as dramatic as it is for me because they usually always cycle a card. They would start to cycle the rightmost card from the reserve. There aren't any cards there. We would then cycle a random card from hand and this is really the worst thing. If the card hand would be empty then they would really eliminate the top card of their draw deck. In this case we would go for the random card from hand and again it's only cycled so that's not something. I will still go for a six-sided die i will really roll on a six simple as that so one two three so this card is cycled we don't get to look at it we are only allowed to um, basically check out their forsaken pile never the cycle pile never the hand never the draw pile obviously but that's i guess already the end of their turn so it's back to us and we can no longer pass because we have now more cards than the i player and we are not at our or under our carry over limit and each game i have played again this is just my third game against the bot is playing out completely differently um it's it's really astounding how much replayability you simply get it's always the same set of cards i was using because i was always playing this scenario here um it's also always the first battleground that you encounter but still it feels so different each time you play this game it's really unbelievable so we have to do something now so we can also start playing cards we can move cards we don't have anything in our reserve we can cycle a card which is kind of a pass but you're still losing a card we can we know this is pretty bad eliminating two cards from hand to draw one card this only really makes sense if you have two completely useless cards in your hand you have to do something then you do that we can use an action no that's not the case and we are not using any ring token so i think it's either cycling a card or playing a card in this case we really may want to play a card and i'm tempted to play some gamji actually into the reserve yeah let's 
do that. So the card goes into our reserve area. In order to pay for a card you pay, you have to discard another card from your hand. And I think in this case, I may want to cycle, not discard, cycle the elf eye because we don't have any elf cards, elven cards in our hand. It's really a cool item actually, but right now we don't need it. So we are cycling this. And this was paying for this card. And Sam Gamshi allows us, when he is in the reserve, which he is right now, as an action to cycle this card along with any wheeled items. So we can hold on to this and this would add one shield to the active path, making it stronger, which is something I really quite like, actually. Nice. Okay, that wasn't terrible. Back to the bot player. Can't pass, can't move, can't uh, play an action. So we are playing a card. Uh, one, two, four. And that's just a four. So we are playing the bottom card here. What is it? It's an event. Nazgul's mantle. Choose. Again, we get to choose. Take one random Nazgul from the eliminated pile. Um, we don't have one, so we can't go for this option here. And play it or draw two cards. So in this case, we don't really have a choice. We have to draw two cards. So we can't choose an option which is basically not changing the game state. So that's kind of a bummer. I was really hoping for something better. And now he's back at five cards, which is quite terrible. But I think all the more reason for me to pass because now we have three cards versus five cards and we want to see what they're doing right because again i don't think we are equipped to take over minas mogul even though it would be two victory points which is nothing to sneeze at in this game so back to the bot i will roll a six-sided die they have to play a card um, that's one so the topmost card is being played and okay oof. <laughs> the witch king himself he can go to path one two three or five to nine i don't really know what's happening at path four thematically i mean i read the books i think at least twice i watched the movies countless times even the animated one from i don't know 30 years ago or even longer than that um but yeah um, it's a Nazgul, obviously, um, and while in reserve, draw one additional card at each draw check. But I think he's not playing this into the reserve because um, we are looking here. The second priority, because it's not an item, obviously, where, who says to play to a path if the shadow player could conceivably win, but is currently losing. That's exactly what's happening here. So right now he's losing that path. Path. And with these two skull symbols, he would conceivably win. He's not taking into the account that I have Sam Gamchi out in front of me. He's only really looking at his hand of cards, or not the card that he played and the cards that he has in reserve. In this case, he can conceivably win, which means two versus one. So he's immediately playing the Witch King here onto Gildor's encampment, which is kind of. Hmm, Let's say a good thing because ultimately every attacker on a path will also be removed from the game eliminated. So this is a very, very powerful card and losing this to only quote unquote one victory point could be quite all right actually. So now it's back to us. We could still pass because we have three cards versus the four cards of the shadow player. Um, but in this case, we may want to force his hand. So I'm really thinking about using um, the action on Sam Gamchi because right now he is in our reserve. We can cycle this card to add one shield to the active path. So basically forcing the hand of the shadow player is usually not a bad thing. So let's do that. So he's not out of the game, simply cycled. And again, this allows us to add one more shield onto the path. So right now it's two versus two, which means we are winning this path. There is, I think, one scenario in the book where you have to have more defenses than attack points in order to win. So a tie is not enough, but I think that's not true for the fellowship scenario here. So whenever he's now playing more characters, he will definitely play it here. Again, for us making sure he might be then sacrificing to some extent more powerful cards in there. Back to the bot. We are rolling a die. It's the third card here. Um, let's see what this is. And that's an army goblins of the misty mountains and the artwork is top notch i really love it a lot very thematic so nicely done really love it but that's also the case for the war of the ring the big brother big war game basically so um it's also a card um it's an army armies never go to paths actually unless there is something on the on card which says so but in this case it's not the thing he could in theory play it onto a 
battle crown no it's a monster army or a monstrous army but minas morgul can only be defended by mortal armies which in this case means we have to play those fellas into the reserve they will come back sooner or later for sure and their ability simply says if this card is eliminated for any reason cycle it instead so they will keep coming back i mean you know those pesky little goblins here but that's their action we can't pass unfortunately now so we can consider to play a card another card into the reserve uh, Frodo also keeps coming back it's basically the same when he is eliminated he will always come back so he cycled instead mm, Gandalf is a very powerful character but it's very early he can go on to any path right now hmm I don't know I don't know I don't want to play I mean we have a cool combination here between Gandalf the Grey and Glamdring because we have them both I think we are playing Gandalf now hmm. into the reserve for now we could play to the but I think I want to hold on to that right on the other hand if we are extremely lucky we could win that path right so let's do that so we are playing Gandalf the Grey directly onto the path in order to do so we are cycling Frodo Baggins I don't know if that's a good idea or not but his ability test tells me when we are taking our action next if he is on a path you may use your action to activate a path of the next higher number which means we are automatically resolving combat on this path because there can only ever be one active path there can be in theory an unlimited amount of battlegrounds active but that's not the case for a path so if we are now somewhat extremely lucky this could go our way actually but usually <laughs> Yeah, you know how, yeah, well, how bad I'm rolling, right? So <laughs> let's roll for the AI play. I think in this case, we're rolling a six sider. So one, two, three, four, five, six, because again, we are not doing anything with the goblins. So let's see, that's five. So it's the last card in the deck. And I think we are lucky. I think we are really lucky, at least in respect to the path. We will lose the Minas Morgul. That much is clear. Um, it's a Mordor army, obviously. It's Mordor orcs. It's also the same as the goblins. They will keep coming back. Um, we are not playing this to a battleground. It's an army we can't play it to a path, obviously. I think this is pretty strong, actually. I think this is amazing. Uh, for the next battleground, I'm a bit worried, but for now, we have to play those Mordo Orcs into the reserve, and they always go to the right of any active cards there because what the AI player is choosing, it's basically a concept first in, last out. So whatever happens, whatever he has to sacrifice a card will always do that to the rightmost card in the reserve here for example if he has to activate something it will always go from right to left nice over to me we could pass but we are not because we can win our very first path here without losing the character so we are now using Gandalf's ability if on a path he is on a path you may use your action to activate a path of the next higher number so we have two twos again we are rolling a die so let's roll for the four sider one two three four so we are activating this path the inn of the prancing pony this is a bad one so this card is out i can't show this to you but i'm not so you can figure this out on your own but before we are actually doing this i think before we do this we have to do that let me quickly confirm that actually yes indeed however before the new path activation text of combat is immediately resolved so let's do that so we are comparing skulls against shields the first thing that they have to break through is the or are the defenses of the card which really means tokens that we have played and cup shields that are printed on this if there would be an overflow let's say there would be three skulls on it then we would have to start eliminating our characters in order we have to do that there is no choice but in this case two is already enough to block the witch king which means the witch king is dead and we have won that combat and any leftover characters are also cycled into our cycle pile that was huge nicely done and we have just scored our very first victory point the problem is now we are activating the inn of the prancing pony and keep in mind we are ending the game once we have resolved path number six so this can i think happen um i think four rounds is the minimum that we have to play as far as i remember but because we already have resolved one or we are will be resolving two paths in the very first round we already know for a fact that the game will only last 
five rounds, maybe only four. So in this case, um, we are activating it. Each shadow player draws two cards. It's only one shadow player in this instance. There is a scenario where we would simply duplicate that. In this case, that's not gonna happen. And maybe it was a stupid idea, actually. I really should have known that the second path is worth two victory points, actually. Maybe this was, ah, uh, maybe this was stupid. Maybe this was really stupid. So we're adding four more cards. I will quickly shuffle those, even though we are rolling the die. I still want randomness like crazy in this case. And that's basically also our action, actually. So I think yeah, he will now score two victory points instead of one. But we have, well, maybe it's still not too bad. Maybe it's still not too bad. Let's see about that. So we are rolling our die because there's nothing he can do right now with the cards in his reserve. They can't go to a path, no matter which path it is. So let's roll that die. So we are taking the first card and uh, it's Isengard character Ugluk. He can only go to path five or six and move this card to path six, even if the shadow player is winning. Path six is the last path in this scenario anyway. And the last path he will go out there like crazy. And if he is on a path, then we can activate it. Well, basically, he will exchange the pass if that is. I think if it's useful i think so can't quite remember so for now this has to go to the reserve as well we are down to one card and we only have an item which we can't play right now so we are simply passing so let's keep going no they're rolling a six-sider now one two three four it's the second card in here Okay, that's still okay, I guess. It's another Nazgul. He can go to path two. Keep in mind, we are now at path two. One path two. So we can legally play him there. The thing is, right now, he cannot conceivably win that path with this one character because it's one skull versus one shield. This will change or can change and un Till that's the case, he will then instead play this character to the reserve. So let's quickly do that. So it goes up here. And again, conceivably really means the card that we have played plus any cards they have in their reserve, which would help them. But he has uh, an action in the reserve, uses an action cycle this card, and each free people's player must forsake a card. Yeah, that is terrible. And having us forsaking a card is always bad. Uh, we are still passing, I believe, which means he is now cycling the reaver here. Nuskull, so each free people's player must forsake one card. And forsake means choose a card to eliminate either from your hand, your reserve, or the top of your draw deck. I think because we have now cycled Gandalf, we may no longer need Galandrin here. Um, and I think I want rather a card which I know is not useful at this point in time, rather than really something very fancy that might be coming up with our next card draw. So I think I am going to forsake or eliminate my first card, which is Galandring. Very powerful weapon indeed. Okay then, now the shadow player is theory at his carryover limit of two. So maybe let's have a quick look at the flow chart here. Um, can the bot pass? Yes, indeed. Now we are checking this. Is any other player or bot, so basically only us in this case, above the carryover limit? Above. We are not above the carryover, which means, no, nope, we are keep going like moving and playing cards. In this case, we have to continue playing cards. When I read this first, I found it quite odd, actually. And I believe Colin from One Stop Co-op Shop also asked the very same question on the Geek. Actually, I found that quite funny. But yeah, that's how it is. So one, two, three, four. Four. So the first card we are playing, it's a hill troll, which he will also play into his reserve. And oh, maybe I should have mentioned that. You might have noticed we always have to uh, cycle a card in order to play a card. That's not true for the bot player, obviously. You have seen that. They simply play the card no matter what. They're not playing this card to the battlefield, battleground, because yeah, it's not legal to play, so they don't want to have any monsters at Minas Morgul, it seems. So the last thing to do, the last action is to draw this card here. Mm, and it's an item for Saruman, Saruman's staff, uh, which is unplayable because we don't have Saruman out. Eliminate this card and choose. So we can take Saruman from the draw deck or cycle pile into a hand or add one corruption. And I think in this case, we want to add a corruption, I believe. And I think I should, oh, I forgot that actually. 
they should have won corruption already right when we have when there was one card which we have sorry forsaken right yeah this one here i decided to go for the corruption so they already had one victory point basically next to that so i would put here i think in this case we will do the same because saruman could make things much more difficult actually yeah i don't want saruman out right now so we are doing this um we are adding one corruption which is a victory point for them but i think we will score two points for the path now which is pretty good so this card is then also eliminated and that's now the end of the round because the bot is out of cards and unfortunately this is really a broken flowchart because they are missing the exit routine <laughs> because they would always go this and at that point in time they wouldn't be able to move they wouldn't be able to play it i think there's basically one line missing here no more cards in hand pass that's basically what they miss i was really wondering if i should feed this into jet gpt or something like that and see if they understand this flowchart actually would be quite funny but yeah we will end the round which means we are resolving the battlegrounds and the paths so we will start with the battleground here minas morgul we haven't even tried to attempt to take it over which means uh, they will simply win that that's two victory points for them so they're at four already plus the uh, two plus the two corruption they have but it's the same here for the Inn of the Prancing Pony. We have successfully <laughs> defended, even though no one is there. I mean, all the streets are deserted, it seems. But we will collect the two victory points here. So we are at three. They are at four, which isn't terrible, quite honestly. And then uh, basically the last thing that we do, or one of the last things that we are moving the starting player marker over to us and at each of the sides will now draw two uh, three cards again we are playing on the let's call it easy mode which means the shadow player will also only quote unquote three cards normally in normal multiplayer game or if you would be playing on the challenging mode they would be drawing four cards so let's see what we get sting oh quite nice oh no oh this could be bad mm. no Oh, that is so unfortunate. I mean, these are three very powerful items. The problem really is we can't play them right now. We always have to attach them to a wielder, to a character. Are you kidding me? Okay, this is so terrible. But let's activate our battleground. This is Rivendell, by the way. I happen to remember. So this is a free people's battleground. So we have to actively, or not active, we have to defend it in order to score those points. But it always already comes with two shields. A good thing really about this one is the elf player draws one card and then cycles one card from hand. So this could be crucial. And no, it's another item. Are you kidding me? This is so bad, so terrible. I think it doesn't really matter, actually. I know we have, I think, because we haven't seen Gimli yet, we will instead get rid of Sting. It's so weird we are cycling it. Um, because I think both Sam and Frodo are in our cycle pile. And again, Gimli could come up rather sooner than later for for all i know okay that was quite bad so will be a short round for us we will be activating one of those two paths one two three four that's four this one down here it's imladris okay that's that was so important the elf player draws two card oh come on no items anymore we want characters and armies come on fingers crossed and it's gimli Woo -hoo -hoo. okay that is quite powerful he can go to the path even mm, that's nice and another card and oh galadriel yeah the mirror of galadriel so we will definitely use one of those to bring gimli into the game okay that is quite nice actually cool stuff and then we would be starting the next round of the game but i think for today i will end my playthrough of course now i have to assess the cards that we have out here because i know he will try to take over rivendell and or maybe the path um yeah at least the hill troll can go to rivendell and yeah the goblins can also go there together even though he would not be able to 
defeat ribbon there because they only have two attack icons here so right now he cannot conceivably win the problem is yeah we can't send Gimli to defend Riven there I mean makes perfect sense thematically right hmm but yeah let's see about that but yeah for today I will end my playthrough mainly for you giving me giving you some room to find and spot and make me aware of any goofs I may have made so let me know if I did something terribly wrong but I think I got it figured out at least I hope also let me know what you think I should be doing next really looking forward to any advice from you guys I hope you enjoy my little playthrough of War of the Ring the card game here with the I keep forgetting against the shadow expansion which really adds a lot to the game and yeah it's a fun exercise a fun experience exercise, fun experience to play I really enjoy this a big deal it's a very nice puzzler it feels very thematic artwork is lovely absolutely gorgeous so yeah let me know what you think and yeah with that being said hope to see you soon in one of my other videos and until then bye bye